Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be talking about foliar spraying, foliar spraying tips, and some of the benefits of foliar sprays. Um, first up, we'll talk about why foliar spraying works so well. Um, we believe that all plants did start in the ocean um, and the majority of nutrients they were taking up while they were in the ocean is going to be through their leaf tissue. Um, the way plants take up nutrients through their leaves are through things called stomatas. The stomatas are small openings, mouth-like openings in the bottom of the leaf that um, exhale oxygen and water and inhale CO2 and uh, nutrients. So since that's where they take their nutrients up, we're going to want to concentrate our sprays, especially if there's nutrients in our foliar spray, um, to those stomatas on the underside of the leaves. Um, the time that the stomata is the most open is about one hour after the lights have shut off. So if you can, do your foliar sprays in the dark cycle. Um, but if you can't, there's no problem. Just turn on a fluorescent light or your overhead lights and turn off your uh, high intensity lights. Um, the, the stuff that's on your actual leaf tissue, depending on what you're spraying, could be uh, affected by high lights being shine on them. You could have burning or, or some kind of damage. So you want to just do your foliar sprays in low light or in the dark cycle. Um, if you're doing a foliar spray outside in the summer, um, don't wait until midday to do it. Do it in the early morning or do it in a shaded area. Um, once again, you don't want any kind of you know, burning from intense light on, on top of your foliar spray. So some of the uh, stuff we'll look at for nutritive foliar sprays, the other one would be a microbial foliar spray, which is what we'll talk about here shortly. But first up is a nutritive foliar spray, which we're using nutrients to get it right to the plant. So if you're having a deficiency or you're seeing some problems, this is a way to get what you need directly to the part of the plant that needs it. Um, it's kind of like an injection for the plant. Um, you can use it to solve problems, but we like to kind of encourage to use it as a proactive solution to problems. Don't wait until you have a problem, spray it on a regular basis, that way you never see a problem. Um, a healthy plant is also more resistant to pest attack and uh, mold issues. So first up we have is the Plant Amp Calcium product. This is a water-soluble, omri-listed calcium. So if you're having some calcium issues with a heavy feeding plant, or for whatever reason your calcium's not available to your plant because of you know, pH issues at the moment, uh, lockup, you can get that calcium right to the plant. So this is great to use by itself, but also mix with other products to concoct some kind of you know, master foliar spray. Um, next up we'll have is the Heavy 16 foliar spray. Um, the he Heavy 16 foliar spray will also give your plants just this lush green growth, you know, great vegetative growth. Um, help your plants through some stresses is probably the best thing that it does. Um, if you have a plant that's out there in early spring, um, that's getting those cold nights, um, and you're trying to get it out there as early as possible, this would be a great spray to spray on there um, to keep her happy or keep those plants happy in those cold uh, early spring. Or if you have a plant that's out in late fall, you're trying to keep your pepper plant out there just for another week, um, but the temperatures are getting down there, this would be a great product to spray on there just to keep her you know, available for that next extra week. Um, and if you are using greenhouses this summer, we all know you get those hot 100 degree days in the greenhouse. Also a great product to spray on any kind of plant that's going through heat stress. Um, you know, uh, so a great product in general to have in your garden. Um, next up, we'll look at is the dark energy. Um, dark energy has got a highly available form of nitrogen, so it's going to green your plants up. Um, but it's really known for keeping your plants nice and short and bushy, um, and also creating some real nice tight internodal spacing, which can you know encourage larger yields down the road. Um, it does have its own smell to it, so be prepared for that. But it's it's absolutely well worth it. So um, next up, we have a combination of full power and age-old kelp, which is something that we've been using here for a long time. There's a ton of recipes in the market um, and a ton of recipes online for different foliar sprays. I do encourage you to try different ones um, and to see how they work for you. But this is a great, really simple, low-risk, high-reward mix here. Um, a teaspoon of the age-old kelp and a teaspoon of full power from BioAg and into a 32-ounce sprayer. Um, pH to around 6.2 and spraying your plants and though you'll definitely see some results. So next we'll talk about microbial teas. Um, if you know how to brew compost teas or if you've you know been researching compost teas, you also have seen that you can foliar spray these things. So the best way to foliar spray them is to A, make sure it's strained. You don't want a ton of particulate in your spray. It'll clog up your sprayer, ruin your sprayer, and also the plants probably aren't going to like it very much. So strain your teas if you're going to use them as a spray. 
Um, a compost tea has a ton of benefits. Um, it is going to cover your plant, your leaves, your stems, your stalks, your you know roots with a microbial film, basically. Um, that microbial film has been known to um, increase resistance to pest, um, increase resistance to mold, and also the number one thing uh, would be um, raise uh, BRICS levels. Now, BRICS is a measurement of carbohydrates and uh, mineral density in the sap of the plant. Um, and they use that to just measure the, you know, how good the plant is doing. So higher BRICS levels are going to give you better flavor, better aroma, and also the higher BRICS levels have been shown to cause the plant to be less desirable to pests and less desirable to mold. So uh, you really can't overapply microbial teas. They don't have nutrients. They don't, they're not going to burn you up or anything like that. Um, so go ahead and try that out, and I think you'll be uh, you know, pleasantly surprised with the benefits. Um, once again, with the... Um, Microbial teas, you want to use a low pressure in your sprayer. They need the protection of the water droplet to get onto your plant. If it's too fine of a mist, it can affect them and, and you know mess them up going through those really fine misters. So um, for small time gardeners, I really like this you know, 360 just hand sprayer. The nozzle on it can turn 100, uh, 360 degrees, so it's great for getting underneath plants. A little bit bigger gardeners might like this one. It has a, uh, a telescopic um, extender on it that works really well to get underneath you know um, your plants as well especially if you have to have you know a long reach or something like that so this one works great um, if you have it's about a gallon sprayer so it gets a little bit farther than this 32 ounce sprayer we got here um, and then up to that this one has the wand on it so it gives you a little bit more flexibility you can set it on the floor and manipulate your plant from there and then all the way up to this bigger guy here two gallon um, with the brass handle brass I'm sorry brass tip and a brass nozzle there um, so if you have a bigger garden this probably be the one for you this also comes with a pressure gauge so it's nice that you can really dial in your pressure a little bit better so um, all these things are available at our website on 400ponics.com I um, hope this video helped you out and encouraged you to look into foliar spraying and uh, the benefits of foliar spraying um, come check us out we'll see you soon